Your word tells us in the book of 2 Timothy 2 and verse 2 that we should pray for all people but especially those that are in authority. Those that take decisions. Which decisions will impact our lives. We impact our land. We therefore as a church lift this nation and lift our leadership and bless them in the name of Jesus. And bless them in the name of Jesus. And bless their minds, their thoughts, and plans upon this nation, Lord. Bless them, Holy God. Bless them, Holy Father. With the wisdom from on high. Find their hearts, O oh God. And fill them with the wisdom of God. That every plan, every project, will come for the benefit of your people and will benefit your people, Lord. We pray for this nation, Lord. Why do you tell us, Lord, that this is the year of fruitful partnerships? That this land, this nation will partner with nations and friends that will bring a positive change to the land, Lord, and to the people, and to the people of our land, O oh God. We bless you, Holy Father. Even this moment, as these wonderful leaders meet together, I pray that your spirit will hover over that place in the name of Jesus. And your spirit will invade this atmosphere, will invade this sky of Rwanda, and will fill it with the goodness of God, with the peace from your life, with your love, Jesus. And after all is said, I pray that everyone will know that you are God over their lives, over our land, O oh God. And they will bow down and worship the only living God. We bless you and love you, Holy Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 It's always good to remember and pray for this wonderful nation that the Lord has given us. The Bible says the peace of the land that you are in, you also enjoy it. So praying for the nation is the responsibility of the church. Therefore, whenever you pray, always remember to bless your land, to bless the nation. Amen. It's very, very, very important. So as you know, uh, today we'll be, of course, talking about the, this theme that the Lord gave us of the year which is fruitful partnership, courageous initiatives, and what? Evident growth. But today I will be dwelling much on what I call godly partnerships. Sometimes we may dwell, we want to spend much of our time on the fruits but the fruits must come from godliness. Fruits must come from godliness. And we will go to the book of 1 John. I don't know who's going to help me read the book of 1 John, chapter 1. And you will read from verse 5. So the Bible is saying this is the message that we have heard from him and it is the one that we are going to proclaim to you when I read that it captured my attention and I felt like I want to stay there what is that message so while we are God is telling us that this is a year of partnerships God was telling me you must first of all know the greatest partner that you have to look for when God is in partnership with you, or when you are in partnership with God, then you are sure of every step that you take. First John 1 John 1.5, this mm. is the message we've heard mm -hmm. from him mm. and proclaimed to you, mm. that God is light. One, God is light. That should be underlined. Yes. That God is light. Yes. And where he, li he is, there is no what? And in him... Is no darkness in at all. him. There is no darkness at all. So light and darkness can never be in partnership. 
When light of God appears, guess what happens to darkness? It disappears. So the first best partnership you can ever have is receiving the light of God in your life. Is receiving God in your life. That's the beginning of the, the foundation of every partnership that you are going to have. This is the message. God is light. And where he is, in him, there's no what? There's no darkness. If we want that, what do we do? But if we walk in the light. But if we walk in the light. As he is in the light. As he is in the light. We have fellowship with one another. We are having fellowship actually. Now we can have fellowship with one another. The right partnership now comes. Yeah. You can't pretend to be working in good relationship with someone if there is no God on top of you. And I pray, oh Lord, I want to walk in that light all days, all the days of my life. And then every other thing that I can do now can be meaningful. Can be meaningful. Why? The right partnership I have with God. Acts 9.20 mm. And immediately he proclaimed Jesus. Immediately. Immediately. He started proclaiming who? Jesus. Jesus. Remember, synagogue. when he stood up, he did not go back. He mm. went forward to Damascus where he, he was going to torture Christians. Mm. But when he reached there, instead of torturing them, what did he do? What did he do? The Bible is, says he started preaching Jesus, the name of Jesus. When the light of God is in you, it is evident. Evident. It is evident. It is evident to everyone. And everyone was amazed. And they started saying, isn't this soul there is a man who used to do what? To persecute believers. What has happened? It's God who put them on his way. He made sure he gave him the right people on his way. Gentlemen here, still young. Ladies here, still young. Get rest in God. Instead of waking up, where is the man? Where, is the, where are the ladies? Get rest in God. You find there's someone lost in him. And you get lost together. And you find the real life in him. You find the real life in him. He is so good. He is so nice. So we see the life of Paul changing why he had accepted the light of God in him. That's why the Bible says in Matthew 6, 33, find first the kingdom and the rest shall be added. But sometimes we wake up chasing the rest. Instead of chasing the righteousness of God, we chase the rest. But if we are right with God, the rest shall be added. The Bible says. So the first thing or benefit of God in partnership will be you, can, you will conquer even your failures, even your past failures. You will be able to conquer them now. You can even examine yourself and say, well, how did I fight my battles in 2019? How did I address this issue? Was I alone or I had God? If you had God, you can never fail. Impossible. You can never fail because God can never fail. I want to go through the Bible and we read about Moses. In the book of Exodus 2, you can read from verse 11. And, but he's still alone. He has not encountered God. He's now trying his own, with, own, his, with his own strength. And look at what he can afford. Mm -hmm. Heaven says, mm. one day mm. when Moses had grown up, he went out to his people and looked at their burdens mm -hmm. and he saw an Egyptian, an Egyptian beating a Hebrew. He saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew. One of his people. Mm -hmm. He looked this way and that. And he seen, looked this way and that. He looked this way and, and that. that. And seeing no one. And seeing no one because his eyes are limited. Yes. Hey. 
until you partner with the one who sees what you can't see. The God of heavens. God who sees the invisible. With your eyes, you throw them here and there and you see nothing. But it doesn't mean that there is nothing. Yeah. God is there. Yeah. It's good we really encounter this wonderful God. Mm. Who can see, who has no limitation. Who can see what we don't see. Mm. Oh God, I pray that you will walk with me every single detail of my life. That you help me, Lord, see what you can see. Because this gentleman, with his initiative, all he can see is nothing. When you have no eye of God, mm. your sight is still short. Short sight, Sighted. <laughs> you are still short sighted. Even if you have no glasses, you are still short sighted until God, who can see all the visible and invisible, is in you. Seeing no one, mm -hmm. he struck down the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. Uh -huh. When he went out the next day, mm. behold, mm. two Hebrews were struggling together. Uh -huh. and he Look said, at the consequences now yeah. of the short-sightedness of this gentleman. Mm. Because he was alone, he could only do what his eyes could show him. Mm. And now you are going to see, because he thought no one saw, and you are going to see him. Uh -huh. The two Hebrews were struggling together, mm -hmm. and he said to them, mm. He said to the man in the wrong, mm. Why do you strike your companion? Mm -hmm. He answered, Who made you a prince? Who uh, made you a ruler? A, a prince a judge, and a, a judge over, over us. us. Uh -huh. Do you mean to kill me like, as you killed the Egyptian? Even when you think no one saw you, someone saw, saw you. So while he was there in chapter 3, the Bible says he, he saw the burning bush. He saw the bush that was set on fire but could not burn up. And the Bible says he went closer to the bush. And the voice of God from that bush told him, Moses, Moses, put off, remove your sandals because the place, the ground you are standing on is a holy ground. So he's actually telling him the mentalities, the, 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 the thinking patterns, you better remove. You, you have been, you know, running up and down. Running up and down. Running away from Pharaoh. Thinking your, your legs, your long legs that <laughs> you can be saved by how fast you run. But the truth is now, you are in my hand. You better change you encounter me and we walk together. And you will make a difference. Why? You are, walk, you are now walking with me. The Bible says, and he removed the sandals. And God told him this. I, am God. I have heard the cry of my people. Yes. And I have come down to, to, to set them free from the hand from Egyptians. And from verse 7, you will see him complaining, say, saying, God, you don't know what you're talking about. I am actually here as a refugee. I ran away from this fellow. He was very bad at me. He wanted to capture me. I did this. I'm living in the field. I can't go back to that place. But with God, he was able to go back to the same place he was running away from and even defeated whatever was running after him. Mm. That is Pharaoh. Why? It was no longer him alone. It was God who had sent him. And he actually, when you go to, you can read to chapter 3 verse 11 and see. But Moses said to God, Moses, God is giving him this, but because of the failure of the fear of the failures he met in the past, you are going to, give, to see the excuses he's giving. Mm -hmm. Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh? Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the children of Israel and out bring of Egypt? The children of Israel out of captivity. Mm -hmm. He said, "But I will be with you." God said, "But I will be." With. That's very important. Who am I? What Moses was saying. Who am I? Mm -hmm. Indeed. Without God, we are not nothing. nothing. 
What makes a difference is when we are with God. Mm. Mm-hmm. He said, but I will be with you and this shall be the sign for you that I have sent, I have sent you. Mm. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve, you shall serve God on this mountain. And you shall worship me on this mountain. But the assurance that he has is God must make sure that he says, it's not like the other day when you tried to do it your own way. When you saw there and there and you tried to do something, it is now me who is going to direct your steps and I will be with you. That's why he was always praying, always praying, saying, God, if you don't go with me, because I have learned the secret, if you are not in partnership with me, I can't do anything. So when God said, I will go with you, now Moses started doing and using even a simple thing. The stuff that he used to beat the cattle and what was enough. Why? It is not the speciality of the staff. It is God that was with him and his staff. So every other thing, whether growth, whether initiatives, every other, before we take any step forward, if you get to be sure that God is with you, because when he is with you, then even what you feared, even what you failed to do, you will do it this time. And in the same place, hey, running away from Egypt, running away from Pharaoh. You know when he came back, Pharaoh was still there. Egypt was still there. Egyptians were still there. Nothing had changed, but him, he had changed. And which change? He had encountered, and God was with him. Therefore, overcoming was inevitable. May the Lord be with you. Why do you plan all the initiatives that you want to undertake this year? All the initiatives, everything, may the Lord stand with you. Because there you'll be sure that you can never be stopped. If God is with you, is on your side, who can be against you? No one. Whatever we do, we make sure. Is God with me? Is God in this thing? Is God directing my steps? Is God helping me in this decision? Is God? That is very important. That is the godly partnership that we should yearn for. We should therefore involve him in whatever plan that we intend. We thank you, Jesus. We bless your holy name, Lord. We thank you for being all in all to us. We thank you for that love. The Bible says you have loved us with an extraordinary love. Your love can never fade away. I pray in the name of Jesus that that love will be felt, will be experienced, will be filled in our hearts, oh God. We are created by you not just to live individually, to live on our own, but to live this life with your help. May you help someone here, Lord, who had failed a number of things in the last year. But we have seen someone who tries alone when he meets you, even whatever was the failure to him becomes a success. I pray in the name of Jesus that you stand with your people, Lord. Bless them, Lord. Guide them. And above all, enlighten them, Lord, that they can know you and you as their Savior. We bless your name, Jesus. And we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much. Uh, God bless you.